All right, so looking at the box office from this past week, the total domestic box office uh, came in around $59 million, uh, which is about a 25% drop from last weekend. Um, so again, still not particularly great. Um, I've talked about this pretty much every single week, um, and I'm going to talk about it again today, that this is very much the calm before the storm. Um, spoiler alert, looking ahead to this upcoming week, uh, or weekend, I should say, is Dune Part 2. Um, and that's going to be a huge, I mean, like I just said, the, the, this weekend brought in about 59 million total. Dune is projected to do even more than that just on its own, right? So I think a lot of studios have released things kind of cautiously. Again, they're not putting their huge projects in, in this space. Um, though we do have a few new releases this week coming in at number two, we have Demon Slayer, uh, Please forgive my pronunciation. Demon Slayer, uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba to the Hashira Trainik, uh, which brought in about 12 million at the domestic box office, um, which is about in line with the projections. It was projected to come in around 9 to 14 million. Um, and so far, it's made about 28 million worldwide. I guess I this is completely foreign to me, no pun intended. Um, I do not watch Demon Slayer. I have not seen this film. Um, but clearly, you know... They must have enough of a fan base here to come in at number two. Though not number one, which we'll talk about. Um, we also have at number three, Ordinary Angels, kind of like a Christian family drama film, um, coming in around six and a half million for this weekend, um, which again also falls into the projections, which uh, as, uh, you know predicted it would come in around five to ten million. Um, and th this is off of a 12 to 13 million dollar budget. So this is... You know, c considering the kind of film this is, um, you know, I think that's okay. The question will be is, will it have legs, right? Will it be able to remake, will it be able to make back its budget, which is potentially dubious again as we're about to move into uh, Dune, Dune 2 time. Um, and then coming in at number eight, all the way at the, near the bottom of the top ten, we have Drive Away Dolls, the solo Ethan Cohen um, kind of... Uh, uh, oddball's the wrong word, um, but kind of like uh, quirky comedy uh, with Margaret Qualley. Um, and that brought in only about $2.4 million in the domestic weekend, which again also has fall, um, you know, fell into the projections, which, is, which was originally $2 to $4 million, um, and has made about $2.6 million worldwide. So again, nothing, nothing crazy here. Um, and... and, and you know, not only is it not crazy, but it's also expected, right? These are not huge, high-profile projects, necessarily. Um, so, it's, you know, it is, it's, if I were them, I'd be a little disappointed. But again, they did kind of fall within the projections. And, um, you know, it make, when, when you're releasing your movie right before Dune Part 2, you're going to have some issues. Um, looking at uh, films continuing this week. Uh, holding out in number one, we have Bob Marley, One Love, the, the Bob Marley music biopic, coming in at $14 million for, for this weekend. Again, it held uh, its first place spot in its second frame, um, but it had a pretty sizable drop at 53%. Not awful, not the worst, but certainly not what you would want to see moving into uh, this... this um, you know this this period of the box office and during this quarter, um, this brings its total to 71 million domestic and 121 million worldwide. I still have yet to see it. I'm, the plan is to go see it later this week, um, so definitely check out cinemancuso.substack.com uh, where I publish uh, written reviews of films that I of, of new films that I go see. So definitely go to that and uh, subscribe on Substack to so you don't miss my review of Bob Marley One Love. But again, from what I've heard, it's fine. Um, and it was pretty impressive the results it was able to pull off in its opening week and weekend. But clearly, um, everyone who wanted to see it, or a majority of the people who wanted to see it, saw it, right? And now it's kind of kind of having a slower come or um, not a slower, pretty pretty fast come down. Um, another film that was released this week, uh, excuse me, last weekend that's continuing here. We have at number four, Madam Web. Uh, bringing in about six million this weekend, dropping from second to fourth place in only its uh, second frame. Even worse, drop a sixty-one percent drop. Again, this has gotten horrible word of mouth. Um, you know, when your film is in conversation with Morbius, um, which you know a lot of people consider just to be 
one of the worst films of the decade, if not of all time, one of them. Um, you know, when your film is in conversation with that, it's a bad sign. Um, and not only did it have a bigger drop than Bob Marley, but also has not made as much, right? So this is this brings it to uh, a domestic total of thirty five million and a worldwide total of seventy seven million. So um, I, I forget the total budget for this, but well above that seventy seven million worldwide total, right? Um, this is going to probably end up um, not only not breaking even, but being a bomb, right, for, for Sony. But again, I don't know what they were thinking. I I just, I, mean, I don't want to go on a tangent here, but this, I just have never understood their business strategy of we're going to basically make an MCU of our own, but without Spider-Man. And we're just going to use all of his villains, what makes them interesting is contrasting them with Spider-Man. So when it's Venom, or and Venom's the one I get the most annoyed about because the reason why Venom, from my understanding, I'm not a huge comic, comic book person, but from my understanding, the reason why Venom looks the way he does is because the symbiote, the symbiote goo was at one time fused with Spider-Man. So when it becomes its own creature, it models its, its face after the Spider-Man mask. So in the Tom Hardy Venom movies, why does Venom look like that if there's no Spider-Man? So this movie is just another example of Sony just not you just just not having the the wherewithal to you know actually pull something like this off. Um, another uh, film I'm putting quotes here. Film continuing we have at number ten, The Chosen, season four, episodes four to six, um, bringing in about one point eight million for the weekend. A uh, pretty big drop, not necessarily in terms of percentage. It only dropped about 49%, but it dropped from 5th to 10th to place um, in only its second frame. This is going to bring it to a $7.9 million total for both domestic and worldwide. Again, this, from what I've heard about this show, it has a pretty uh, devoted fan base. Um, and it's I've heard it's, it's actually quite good. Um, so it is an interesting strategy just to kind of bring in some extra revenue for the show. Cause again, it is primarily a television show. So essentially any of anything they make here is just icing on the cake. Um, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, I mean, not only would I not be surprised, I am a hundred percent certain this will not still be in the top 10 next week. Um, just a couple other things here. We have three films here that opened, you know, a long time ago and are still in the top 10. So you have Migration at number five, um, only dropping from fourth to fifth place in its 10th frame, bringing in about 3 million for the weekend. Only a 22% drop, bringing its total to 120 million domestic, 269 million worldwide. Again, this has been a real sleeper hit. I don't know if it's, um, you know, a in the absence of any strong competition for other um, family-oriented animated films, but this has done quite well for Illumination. Also, the, obviously, the big story here is Wonka. Um, it has been the big story, so it's at number seven. It actually, it finally, you know, has fallen out of the top five, um, but only dropped from sixth to seventh in its 11th frame, a 28% drop. So its total now is at 215 million domestic, 617 million worldwide. This has been a huge success for Warner Brothers. Um, and that coupled with Barbie, I'm sure, has really helped the bottom line. Um, and then we also have the, the Beekeeper still in the top 10 at number 9. It dropped from 7th to 9th in its 7th frame. About a 39% drop, bringing its total to 63 million domestic, 150 million worldwide. Again, I have not seen this one, but it must, you know, have enough of an appeal. Um, it seems like very easy watch, very simple, um, and people are clearly liking it. Um, to the point where it still, you know, has this, has, uh, this staying power, right? Even into its seventh weekend. 